for a direction with Pastor Errol Daniel, sponsored by the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Go ahead, drive the nails in my hands, laugh at me where you stand. Go ahead and say it isn't me. The day will come when you will see, cause I'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can die. I will be free Cause I'll rise again Ain't no power on earth can tie me down Yes, I'll rise again Death can't keep me in the ground Go ahead and say you're dead and gone, but you will see that you were wrong. Go ahead and try to hide the sun, but all will see that I'm the All of it, thank you, sisters. All of it is in the scripture. And while you all are ministering, I call it ministering in song because it ought to be ministry. While you are ministering, I remember Jesus said to his disciples, Don't be afraid of those who can destroy your body. From head to foot. But they cannot touch your soul. They can destroy your body. But they cannot destroy your soul. Some of you start to look for it and that is very good. Because I tell you to bring three books. At least three but it should be four. With you to church. One of them is your Bible. 
So when I say something, you just do not take it for granted. You go there and you see where it is. Because until I am not able anymore, I'll speak the Seth, the Lord. So don't be afraid of those who can destroy your body. And believe you me, there are those who have destroyed the bodies of a lot of saints over the years. But they could not destroy their soul. And on this beautiful Lord's Day, this Easter Sunday, to be exact, this Resurrection Sunday, when we know that Jesus Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. Jesus said, listen, Jesus said, because I live, not I the pastor, I have to depend upon him for life. You have to depend upon him. Jesus said, because he lives, we shall live also. I believe him, don't you? I believe you. Would we meet persecutions as we travel from earth to a final destination? And my final destination will be heaven. What about you? Some people's final desti um, destination would be hell, not me. My final destination by the grace of God is heaven. And listen. Oh Lord, thank you. Listen to what Jesus said. Again to his followers. Let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. You believe in God the Father. Believe in me his son. In my father's house. And many mansions. If it were not so. I would have told you. It's getting better. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. And when I come, I'll receive you unto myself. But where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. We give him praise. We glorified him with the song, he is risen from the dead, it's straight from the scripture. Majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified king of all kings. King of all kings. We also sang, death had no terrors for the blood-bought ones. Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. Can you say that? Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. Another time, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. Here's something that you ought to know also. Having said glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. In the book of Revelation chapter 12, I think it's verse 11. But it says, we overcome him. That is, uh, let me say it please. We overcome him, referring to the devil. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimony. They have put it up for you. Thank you. Is it 12 you're seeing or 13? 12 and verse 11. God wants us to be overcomers. We'll meet a lot of problems in this world. And let me just tell you something else here. He had 12 active disciples that were close to him. But three of them were closer than nine. Meaning Peter, James, and John. But he had 
lots of other disciples. At one time, he said to them, and I paraphrase, you were very happy as you feasted on the bread and the fish, but I, I, I have a, a higher plane to take you. And I want to say to you, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, it's in John chapter 6. You have no part with me. This was a higher level of commitment. They heard him and uh, the response of, thank God, not all of them. Some of them said, this is a hard saying. Who can bear it? This man is telling us about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And the Bible says, from that time, some of his disciples, some of his disciples, they went back and they followed him no more. And so he posed the question to those who did not leave. Will you also go away? And brother Peter said, to whom shall we go? To whom? <laughs> the writer says, I am living below in this old sinful world. For some of us, hardly a comfort can afford. But when my soul needs manna from above. You all don't remember some of these songs, eh? You prefer just to while up. But this would help you. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? You have come here today, and I know that the Lord is helping all of us. Amen. And I thank him very much. I want to ask you to let us look at some portions of scripture in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 1. It is written, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. My understanding that the writer of the book of Acts was Dr. Luke, one of his followers. Having written the book of Luke, he's now writing the book of Acts. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. Understand, was a Roman official of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And the next verse says, to whom... He had showed himself alive. Look at that again. Before he went up, he showed himself alive by many. That is after his passion, after his suffering, by many infallible proofs. Infallible proofs. Undeniable, unmistakenly. Wherever you take this proof that Jesus showed himself alive, the verdict must be it's the truth. He rose. Early on, I was saying that 
the guards that were paid to watch him, to make sure he did not rise from the dead. He rose even when they were watching. Daily they watch. Hmm? Daily they watch. Daily they put their eyes on the place where he laid. <laughs> but he rose and they did not see him. It was a shock to them. When they realized that he rose from the dead. So they went to report. And the official said, listen, we have to keep this thing a secret. Don't say that. He rose from the dead. Say that while you were sleeping. His disciples came and they stole him. That could never have been true. Because the Bible tells us at his death. They all forsook him. And they fled. All of them. Forsook him and they fled. So where would they have gotten the courage? To go in the night. When guards were fully armed, and especially Roman guards. They said, we will pay you money to lie. See, and it doesn't matter who say what. Up from the grave, he arose. Can I get a witness? Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph all his foes. He rose a victor from the dark domain. And thank you. And he lives forever with the saints so reign. Go ahead and glorify him. Hallelujah. I don't know if I live to see another resurrection Sunday morning or you. But I know because of infallible proofs that Jesus rose. Now you know he commanded his followers to teach this doctrine. It's a doctrine. The doctrine of his resurrection. Go and teach it. And when, when they taught the doctrine, signs and wonders took place. Because a dead Christ cannot cause a man who was lame from birth to rise up and walk. As Peter said to him, he who was looking for handout, according to Acts chapter 3, he said, Arms, arms, give us some of what you have. Peter and John were in partnership at that time. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. <laughs> some... broke but I don't want to say broke you don't always have money to give now I remember when the Reverend Ulrich Jones uh, we're good friends he's one of the ministers of the, the Anglican church walking through Kingston one of those vagrants asked him for some money and all he had was some change. So he took the change that he had and gave it to the vagrant. The vagrant watched it and just threw it back on him. You know, some people expect big box. Big box. When they beg, another man, businessman, said he told one of them, listen, I've just come to open up the business. Come back late. And he looked at the businessman and said, You're bad walking me, man. I mean, go and come. Can you imagine what would come out of the mouth of some people? But Peter, having said, I don't have silver, I don't have gold. 
But I have something. I give you. In the name. Remember Jesus had just been raised from the dead. And there is no other name that is sweeter than the name of Jesus. There is no name that is more powerful than the name of Jesus. There is no name that is as comforting as the name of Jesus. I can hear that old song, take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. Take it wheresoever you go. It will be a shield from every snare. Just some of the words. The name of Jesus. Some of us act so foolish. We leave Jesus. And we take company that cannot really help us. Help me, O oh God, to deliver this message on this Resurrection Sunday. So having said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk that lame man who did not walk for more than 40 years, fastened his eyes on those men of God, expecting to receive something. If you come here with expectation, you will get. If you come here to be casual, you will leave worse than you came. Because let me tell you what you would leave with false. But if you expect something from God, you would leave here with blessings. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. So the man was helped up. And the Bible says he was now, he was crippled for about 40 years. Was now walking. He was now leaping. And he was praising God. How many of you sat in your sins for years and the devil really pressure you? Pressure you and pressure you. Now Jesus has set you free. Is it not time to rejoice? Is it not time to go back to old school? I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. Glory to his name. I was lost in sin. In the valley of death. Can you help me strike it up please? I am delivered. Praise the Lord. Who has brought this deliverance to you? It's Jesus. The world didn't give it to you. And the world cannot take it away. You all see how people are dying and leaving every cent. But they amass, some of them work hard to get what they have. Some of them, they were robbers and murderers. But they have to leave every single thing. Everything. You may not have a university education. You may not have a certain amount of money. But there's something that cannot be de denied. You have something more than gold. You have your joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. God has removed the ashes and he has given to you beauty. He has removed the spirit of mourning and he has set your feet a dancing. Give the Lord some praise. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Some of us would have been dead but look what Jesus did. He has healed us. Jesus, the living Christ, the Son of God. Preach this gospel, said Jesus. You have infallible proofs. The death of Christ, his burial, his resurrection, 
his ascension and his advent, second advent, second coming, they all tied in. So the preacher would fail just to talk about Christ died. He must talk about it. Because Christ died for us. Amen. We owed a debt that we could not pay. Amen. He paid the debt that he did not owe. He settled the account. Amen. Hallelujah. That we could not settle. Amen. I come here today to help you to rejoice. Amen. Not because your brother or your sister is here. And I am happy to see all those of you who are here. Again, do what you can to make sure that everything go well in this country of ours. We ought not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some do. So much the more we see the day approaching. In whose name? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Now Peter had to address the high-powered people. And uh, the Bible tells us, I'm going to Acts chapter 2 at this moment. Verse 14. There will be no evening service. I understand some churches. I don't think it has come to St. Vincent as yet. Some of them offer you a meal to make sure that you don't complain for being hungry. The um, ladies' ministry used to do that. And they will stand back. But you, there's no bribing to get you to come to the house of God. You just come because you love the Lord. Amen. 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 Stay with me for a few more minutes. In verse 14 of Acts chapter 2. Peter standing up with the eleven. Lifted up his voice and said unto them. You men of Judea. And all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, listen, be this known unto you, and hearken or listen to my words. These men are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it was it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass, saith God. But in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall Prophesy. And I will show, let me take that again, the, the, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. This is what will happen. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When did you call or have you called at all? If not, it's time to call. Every sinner should be sensible enough to say, like the thief on the cross, remember me. He was heading for hell. But just a few minutes he had the opportunity to ask the Savior to remember him. Another guy was next to him. He did not stop head to hell. He cursed. 
he ridiculed. And there's no doubt that he lifted up his eyes in hell. But the one who was wise enough to say, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the response was from the Savior. This day, you're going to be with me in paradise. Call upon the name of the Lord for salvation. Don't try to do religious things for salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord. God raised him from the dead. Listen to this address. I go to verse 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. Who was Jesus? A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders. And signs which he did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. Listen. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and for knowledge of God. You have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God. Has raised up. God raised him up. Having loosed the pains of death. Because it was not possible. That he should be holding of it. And then he speaks about what David said. And I don't have time to go into all of it. But that used to be my closing verse. On the joyful news before. Then he started to help me. In the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. And at his right hand. There are pleasures for evermore. Peter and the rest of the apostles. Spoke about the resurrection of Christ. And by speaking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those who listened to the preaching and were convicted by the Holy Spirit wanted to turn. Look at verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ. So when we sang earlier on. He is Lord. He is Lord. He's risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven. Things on earth. And demons under the earth. And every tongue should confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. There are some lords among men, but Jesus Christ is Lord of lords. There are some kings that God has given the privilege to, to lead people. But Jesus Christ is king of kings. Hallelujah. And Jesus could set up kings and he can also take them down because he's king of kings. And his Lord of Lords. Amen. So where you would get that power from? Ask how he came out of the grave. And you would see that he's more powerful than some of us think. He can silence any one of us right now. But he's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Now the preaching of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the miracles that took place did not sit well with some of the hearers. Let me go back to 36 of chapter 2. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men, and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent. 
Repent. Our country and countries of the world want a lot of things from God, but a lot of us not willing to repent. Leave me. Let me live how I want. And because God is good, he will give to me what I ask. But for your own good, for our own good, we need to repent. Repent of our sins because we have sinned against God in several ways. Is this saying captain and crook? Isaiah 1 speaks about it. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox, animal, knows its owner, and the ass, animal, the donkey, knows its master's crib. But my people doth not know, a sinful nation. You would revolt more and more from the head to the soles of the feet. You find bruises and putrefying souls that cannot be mollified. Except we come to the Lord and he calls us in verse 18 of Isaiah 1. Come now and let us reason to, not just come to church. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And then he appeals to our willingness. Our what? Willingness. He did not make it mandatory. But he made it available. I repeat. He did not make it mandatory. But he made it available. He says, come. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You have a decision to make. You have a choice to make. But he says, if you're willing and obedient... You shall eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And listen to me. God's word is irreversible. Facts change all the time, but the truth cannot change. Jesus said he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. That's the truth. No man could come to the Father except they come by him. Um, whenever at the Passover, Moses gave the instruction that he got from God, he never said, get some coloring that look like blood. Or get yourself some paint. But he said, the animals must be slain. And take the blood of the animals. Not something that looks like blood. But blood. Listen. If the thing is not genuine. It is counterfeit. If you are not saved. You are lost. Amen. If you are not going to heaven. You are going to hell. Amen. If you are not serving God. You are serving the devil. Amen. Let's reason. He offers the best. We preach the name of Jesus and it would attract persecution. On that day, there were those who gladly received the word of the Lord and they were baptized. Verse 41 says, when they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. Wow. 
Verse 46. They continuing daily with one accord. No discord. You know some church people like to cause discord. Eh? My God. When you can't do it all by yourself, you try to recruit somebody else. But in this church, so far, there was no discord. They were in Honda Accord. No, you, you, I just said that to wake up some of you. It wasn't Honda Accord. It was in one accord. You know, one accord. One accord. And the Bible tells us they were in the temple breaking bread and from house to house they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. In a few minutes I conclude. The resurrection message attracted persecution. It is written in one of the epistles, they, listen, that would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It continues. Let me take you from up top and get the whole verse. They that would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I have it. But evil men, don't expect them to get better. Except they allow the word of God to change them. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving as they themselves have been deceived. Do not be deceived, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is the way. The truth and the life. Amen. Amen. I beg you to trust him more than you trust anyone else. The scripture says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in people like me. In people like you. People like you. People who are not here. It's better to trust in the Lord. Trust the word of God. Scripture cannot be broken. God said it. It is settled. And that's good enough for me. Jesus is still the healer. Yes. Jesus is still the savior. Amen. He's still the protector. Yes. He's still the provider. Yes. Jesus is still the lover of our soul. Yes. The old song, Jesus, lover of my soul. Let me to thy bosom fly. While the near waters roll, while the tempest still is high. And oh, that beautiful refrain, hide me, my Savior, hide me, till the storms of life are past. I want to conclude. The, the apostles were brought before the council because of what happened in chapter 3. And they asked, tell us, by what? power and in whose name have you done this what caused this man to be made whole verse 5 chapter 4 came to pass on the morrow or next day that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. What a powerful uh, committee for want of another word. They're now going to sit as judge to judge the man of God and the word of God. But there are some men of God who are not afraid. Even though death comes along, you stand up, stand up firm, stand for principle. 
stand for policy. Stand up. Stand up strong. Stand for the word of God. And anybody who comes against the word of God, you take your stand. Stand up for Jesus. So they're there. So they called the apostles and set them in the midst. And they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? I want you to get this. We're talking about the resurrection message that brought tremendous result. These men of God were proof producers. They were what? Proof producers. Producers, not Bruce, um, producers, but proof. 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 I didn't say Bruce. I said proof. Producers. Answer my question. Peter filled, not with religion. Not religion. But filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of us continue to say, Holy Spirit, you lead me and guide me. In danger, you hide me. But some of us still resist the Holy Spirit. Peter, filled with what? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost said, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, let me say to you that, and that is to all of you, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name, listen, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. God raised him from the dead. It is by him. It is in his name. This man is standing before you whole. And then he used the quotation. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders is become the head of the corner. One day I'll tell you about the cornerstone, how it becomes the head of the corner, because really it was a stone that was rejected. I understand that they, they couldn't find any place to put that stone. When you um, prefabbing, you know, prefabricating to uh, construct a building, there was a stone that they couldn't get to fit any place. So they put it aside. Finally, like you're putting a puzzle together. Finally, the stone that was rejected, that was put aside. They find the place, the real place for it. The chief corner stone. Jesus Christ. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But it's the same man who was wounded for our transgression. Thank God for the science. But Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. You know, they couldn't make hand with them. Say what you want. Some of us um, are not equipped with a whole lot of stuff in our pockets and in our heads. But you know, our hearts are filled. You may call us ignorant. And <laughs> this is no new thing. You hear me? This is no new thing. The, the Bible says in verse 13, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearn but that was only perception you know but perception it was not the truth that they were unlearned and ignorant 
Tell me, can an unlearned man and an ignorant man write epistles like epistles of Peter and the epistles of John? But that's how they perceive them to have been, to put them down. And there are lots of people who like to put you down because of the village you're born in. Amen? Amen. Because you do not have a pigmentation that they have. And on and on we may go, but we don't have enough time for it. So the perception will go on. But one thing they could not doubt. Let me read it. The Bible says, they marveled in verse 13. And they took knowledge of them. That knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. The resurrected one. The resurrected one. My time has failed. They, they had been with the resurrected one. And if you spend time with the resurrected one, power would rub off on you. If you warm yourself by the enemy's fire, you will find yourself cursing and denying Christ. I don't know him. I don't know him. It depends upon where you're getting your heat. If you get Holy Ghost fire, you will get boldness. Not to condemn people. Not to criticize people, but bring them up to scratch. Let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord of lords. But he is king. And he is king of kings. And verse 33 in the same chapter says. That. It was with great power. Gave the apostles. Witness. Of the resurrection of Christ. And great grace. Was upon them. Honor the resurrected Christ today. He didn't rise earlier today. He rose over 2,000 years ago. But he lives. Honor him. Would you like to clap your hands for him? We have to do this by faith now. And faith is a victory that overcomes the world. Raise up your right hand. I want to pray over you. And as you raise up your right hand, you're praying for me also. It is in the name of the resurrected Christ we bow. Jesus, the son of the living God. It is in his name we're asking the father to stretch forth his hand. And grant that signs and wonders will be done in the name of his holy child, Jesus. Somebody needs your help, Father. You know what kind of a help. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we honor you today. Father, thank you for raising Jesus from the dead. We receive the help from him that man cannot give to us. Those who are sick in our midst and elsewhere who are believing you to touch their bodies. We're asking you, oh Lord, that you would hear their cry. Touch them now. From the crown to the soles of the feet. In the name of Jesus. We speak wholeness. Over their bodies. And for those who have become backsliders. We're asking you Lord. That you would help them to come to themselves. And consider father's house. Where there's a fatted calf. Where there's a, a robe. Where there's a feast. And no famine. Where there's a ring. Lord God of hosts. Here in this building. Outside of this building. Here in this country. And other countries. Lord we pray for our rulers. That you have set up in this land. The minister who is the prime one. Dear God and all the other ministers. Pray with me people. Don't 
cut off your prayer. We pray in the name of Jesus for the one who sits as the opposition leader. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all these men, they have their support, but they need your help. This land is yours. The earth is yours and the fullness there of the world and they that dwell therein. It's not man's possession. Man has a position, but it's not man's possession. While you allow them to sit in positions, help them to be wise enough to honor you. Oh God, the situations that we cannot manage by ourselves, whether it's in the medical field or the financial field and the other fields in Jesus' name. We're asking you for our land. We declare that it's a land that is beautiful. And we declare that it is our faith in you that will see us through. All those unclean spirits that perch on the mountain top and lurk in the valleys to confuse and to deceive us. We come against them in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that the spirit of the living God will another time breathe upon us. Give us a revival of righteousness, a revival of holiness. Give us a revival of peace. Do for us more than we ask, Lord, for you are able to do it exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Have your own way. The kingdom is thine. The power is thine. The glory is thine. Let your gospel ministers hear from you. Let them not despise the word watchmen, but let them be pleased to be watchmen and to watch out just in case they would see the sword coming. They would cry aloud. Let them be trumpeters, champion the cause of righteousness. God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you for hearing our praise. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Be seated. We are out of time. We have to stop there for today. But I trust that the word of God will have free course in your hearts. If we can be a further help to you, please get in touch with us and let us know. You can write to us at Direction PO Box 443, St. Vincent, West Indies. You can also call us at 784 456 1636 or visit us online at streamsofpower.com. We look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, may God bless you richly.